I've got this uh, SanDisk Cruiser flash drive. It's the first time I see the device like this, but most likely on the inside, uh, the unit is fairly common and standard. Uh, these monolithic shaped um, SanDisk devices had been popping into the shop quite frequently in these past few months. This looks pretty standard for SanDisk. You see the test points are up on the top. It has some sort of flash burn mark right there. Hopefully it's nothing significant. So my first step of the process to check this out is to see uh, what it's consuming, plug it in and uh, give it some power. Now the readings are pretty good, now we can safely plug this into something more delicate and that would be a USB stabilizer. So this is the control panel, I'm going to launch it up. So it drops the power out during initialization. I'm just uh, plug in the monitor for this. Power up. And then it cuts the cord. This is strange, but this is a good candidate for data recovery uh, directly from the NAND. So this will have to be uh, sended down and prepped for wiring. double-sided tape yeah this gives us a really clear view of what's going on so uh, tube extraction I'm gonna try to use a new uh, soldering tip today I usually use a L shape but this L shape is, has a 0 0.3 millimeter tip at the end of it. And um, I was buying some more cat cartridges and the, the new one that I just picked up has a 0 0.1 millimeter tip, which is definitely more pre precise, uh, but it's straight. gotta mention these um, irons are absolutely top-notch but the price on the tips is insane each one of those is like $40 this is how precise the tip is should make it very easy to work with the size of the pads that we're dealing with today. To bond it all together, I'm gonna use uh, 46 gauge for the signals.
maybe with time it's something that's gonna kind of you know blend in but uh, right now I'm I'm just not feeling it like I can't strip the coat off this thing Alright, so the soldering is done. Perfect. No short. The wiring is the same, nothing is modified. I read the ID and I get the ID right away. And uh, we can see that it's an 8 gigabyte component. We've imported the dump file into PC3000. Uh, the dump file had been error corrected already. Uh, let's do the assembly. So the assembly of this device begins with, uh, for me at least, begins with visual. As we scroll across, we see these um, vertical uh, lines that don't extend all the way down. Uh, looks like there are two planes here and uh, bad bytes are located in different locations in different planes. So as we crawl, scroll across, we see that there is a shift at the end. Uh, the way that this is, the data cannot be assembled. Since we imported the file into PC3000, we can't uh, remove these uh, bad, paid, bad bytes. We can't remove these bad bytes automatically, uh, but uh, the tool makes it very easy to do uh, even manually so in order to do that we're going to go into data preparation and uh, bad bytes cutting uh, we're going to search them in bitmap and what it gives us is gives us uh, two planes separated uh, with blue and green so we can see which one we're dealing with as we scroll along we just got to locate them and uh, by holding down control and double clicking we extract them so when we extract them, the record of location that needs to be taken out goes for specific planes. So as you can see, we've taken out these addresses and we scroll forward. 
until we see the next one. Next one is here. We're going to take it out again. There's another one. There's one in the bottom that goes towards plane one. One more. And one more here. So as an end result, we see that our finish line actually lines up perfectly. And we don't have any vertical lines along the entire view of the block. We're going to apply this. Now, if we uh, go into Page Designer and go into the bit view, those vertical lines are now removed. As you can see, none of them are present. Since this is a, a SanDisk device, our markers are located at the beginning. You can see this pattern that is different from this random noise that's going forward. That's a usual structure for SanDisk controller. Uh, we need to exclude XOR from this. To do that, we can run uh, XOR analysis, but first, uh, in order to know what XOR to apply, we would like to find um, error correction codes. There, it finds uh, 2292 times 4. Uh, since I know that the error correction was already done, we can simply skip this page. And now if we go into uh, XOR analysis, it only gives us these two options. 50% I think is fine. And we're going to pick the most probable one. And when uh, we have the transformation made, we want to split it all by the blocks. So we can inspect what's inside of the blocks, right? So go into page preparation, split by the block. When we split the unit by the block, we can see we can check how they interact with each other by comparing them in the service area. Scroll down somewhere here. If we see that the service area looks very similar to each other, that means that they are joined by pages. So we're going to add that one more element into the equation. Sector size 16. And we're going to run raw recovery on this. So we see that most headers come out green. And since uh, not much came up on the uh, raw uh, recovery result in the beginning, um, let's find out what actually is going to come back once we run the full uh, raw recovery on the uh, pre-assembled unit before the uh, uh, block arrangement is done. So this is what we find. Um, I gotta say that it does look um, good, but as far as the data goes, like file-wise, there isn't much. So if we were to go and build our uh, logical image, uh, block number for SanDisk is the one that we would use because it's a smaller unit. So this is it guys, the data is ready to go and um, now it's just a matter of either transferring it or burning it as an image uh, if that's what's required to a new flash drive so that uh, it can be delivered to the customer. If you guys have any questions feel free to post them in the comments below. For those who are new on this channel feel free to subscribe and hit that notification button to be notified when the next video comes out. And as always thank you guys for watching this episode, I'll see you in the next one.